All right, hey, welcome to the backyard. This is kind of our second segment, I guess, on, on GMO corn, which is genetically modified organism, natural foods, so natural uh, natural dairy, natural milk, and then organic. And and this time we're going to talk about natural. Um, what is natural? Yeah, to to me, to me, natural's uh, very simple. Well, on the on the livestock side in particular is where we see it in the meat cooler, and and those sorts of things. And, and I work with a fairly large natural, uh, natural fed feedlot. They feed you know, the normal corn and normal corn silage raised under normal management practices. But the things we don't do on this feedlot is we, we don't use any implants to promote growth and feed efficiency. We don't have any feed additives um, that are synthetic and, and manufactured to do the same thing. And we uh, we, we just feed them natural grain, natural protein sources, and and do it without antibiotics and those things. Yeah. And there's a certification process that, that could get more detailed, but those, those are kind of the highlights of it, right, Terry? <clears throat> yes, yes. After uh, World War II, the petroleum products came out, and we got our herbicides and our insecticides and uh, our fertilizers, and then antibiotics became more known, more prevalent, easier to use. And then a lot of people, after a period of time, felt, hey, we need to get rid of this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. then they be, uh, work towards uh, organic farming. And uh, actually, since 2002, we have our standards that they have to follow, uh, be certified organic. Now, is that organic a lot different than the others? Uh, yes, they're not using the chemicals and antibiotics. But as far as the, the, the after effect, the final product is still basically the same. We got uh, meat is meat. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your, uh, you, you know, milk one, is milk. One of the real interesting ones, Terry. And I was, we were at a convention here. This was several years ago, probably seven, eight years ago, and I believe it was Dr. Dave Lynn. He, he, he was talking about natural foods and. And the dairy industry is, is really regulated. I mean, they're regulated so tightly. Yes. It's yep. uh, some of these dairy places, uh, the the, malt, the way they, they they produce that milk and how much they produce and how it gets cooled so fast and so yep. quick. Yep. Um, but everybody thinks that we feed antibiotics to cows, and that's simply just not the case. We don't. No. Uh, the, the cows are no different than, than, than human beings or anybody else. They get sick as a calf or whatever. We have to take care of them. That's a human and, and just way of doing things. But cows, we don't give antibiotics to cows. And, and one way that the FDA came out and they tested the milk, um, for example, three eye drops, three eye drops, not eye drops full, three eye drops in an Olympic sized swimming pool, they could find and they could determine whether there was antibiotics in that swimming pool. Yep. Well, what does that tell you? That that's phenomenal. Yeah, very. Uh, that's the type of testing that's going on right now in in the milk industry, in the food industry. No, and as far as somatic cell count, which is a a uh, count that people can use to tell the quality of the product and, yes. and milk. Yep. The state of Minnesota, the, as far as the average for the dairies, the somatic cell count has never been lower than it is right now. Mm -hmm. So the the quality of the product is uh, as good as it's ever been. Right. And then the BST, uh, people talk about that, and there is milk out there, they'll call it non-BST. Uh, all the non-BST means is that those animals were not, were, are, were not injected with BST. And the synthetic BST, form. The synthetic form. And BST is bovine somatotrophin. It's a, it's a natural occurring yes. protein in, in cows. Yep. And with the injection of the BST, we're just putting more of that in that cow. And it, attaches to the liver sites and the cow will produce more milk. And it also causes her to eat more, so that offsets any negative, negative effect that it might have on the cow. And without natural BST, we really wouldn't have any milk to speak of. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so it's just to understand that that's naturally occurring. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yes, the, the, the natural label, so much of that is, it's just that it's natural. Yeah. Where we're not, we're not using drugs and any hormones to influence additionally to what the cattle would naturally produce on the hormone side. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's just keep it that simple. It's just yeah. natural. Yeah, I, I would love to have a glass of milk here because a glass of milk is a glass of milk, whether it's one percent, two percent, or whatever. Whether that cow is producing ninety pounds of milk a day or she's producing forty, a glass of milk is a glass of milk. 
And the unique thing about it is that's our job as nutritionists to go out there in the in the field of, of uh, dairy industry and go out there and supplement them dairy cows. If we would, I'll make this statement, if we would supplement ourselves with the nutrition that we do for dairy cows, We'd be, uh, a lot lot oh, we'd be a lot healthier. <laughs> but I mean, the amount of mineral and vitamins and everything else that we give these dairy animals, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I think we do a pretty good job out there, and, and uh, we do a, we we, uh, we we pack nutrition back into these animals. So, uh, you know what? Thank you guys for for listening again. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Mike. Um, you know, come on down to the backyard and, and see what we got here to offer. Again, we're livestock. We got livestock feed. We got the hobby farms. We got the dog and the, and the cat. And of course, we got the good milk and the, the farm fresh products. So, thank you again. Yard. 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 Yard.